Well, hello, animals and animators. Welcome to the Moho Show. My name is Jackie. And I'm Dave. Get comfortable, pull up a log, and let's dive into the ever-changing world of animation. What have you got for us today? Today's topic is Smart Warp and Photoshop file handling in Moho 13. Let's do it. Okay, so this is not Moho. Oh my god. What's going on here? Well, this is Clip Studio. Okay, so one of the new features is PSD import. In the bad old days, if I was to go and add a new layer into this Photoshop file, it would mess everything up. So in this case, we want to uh, put some nuts in here. So um, if we did that in the past, we'd have to do it in a whole new image and not in just a new layer. But now we can add characters, clothes, give them props, whatever. But you just have to be really careful about giving every single layer an individual name. If you don't give them a unique name, it will break. So let's quickly demonstrate this. Quickly draw a quick little nut. You sure quickly that the squirrel feet. needs nuts when we're already both there? <laughs> <laughs> you can never have enough. Well, you can. Depends if you're tolerant or not, I guess. Let's go for an <laughs> acorn. Is that what an acorn looks like? Um, okay, we're not going to spend a lot of time thinking about this. But if I put it in a group... I'm going to call it acorn. Well, I'll just put it above the whole top level here. And I'll give it a um, color layer. We'll call that. That could be an acorn. It could be a strawberry. Could, yes. Call it acorn line. Acorn color. So well, this is the most important bit. If you don't la label it, it will mess up. I, I mean, I'm in Australia. I don't know what an acorn looks like. I did grow up in England, so I have seen them, but cannot really remember, to tell you the truth. That's pretty close. I think there's a little pip on the top. Oh, okay. Cheers. Like a little, short, little stubby stem type thing. Yes, I think you're right. I mean, I will go with that. And I will go here. Transparency. Multiply. Let's see if the multiply carries over, huh? And the transparency. We'll see if that carries over. That'd be interesting to know, wouldn't it? It would be. I don't know if it does or not. No, I don't know either. Here we go. Boop. Like that? Uh, bit like yeah, that. that'd work. Yeah. There we go. Now it looks proper. Okay. So let's save that. Save. And then I'll... Do the save duplicate as a PSD. All right, so when I save over this squirrel, let's see what happens. In, in the old days, all hell would break loose. So, magic. But it's not in a folder. Why is that? So it doesn't import the new folders but it didn't crash anything so it's that well that's something we've learned so it, it's a, it's pretty good let's um just mask that shadow off um all right so we've got a nice new little system there so what else is new uh, we've got this awesome mesh, auto meshing. Okay. Um, so let's go to the tail here. And then this is the one that we're going to rig. And I will add the mesh for this straight tail. Let's try to create smart warp layer. Let's watch what happens when we do this. This is one of the new features. Bingo. Look at that. Let's put a, a smart mesh in there and just did it automatically. We can hide that, but before we do, this is the trick. You get the freehand. I think this is what we're... If I was to draw a guideline up through here... Did that work? Yes, it did. 
have another look. See all those lines there? Let's have a look at the mesh. And if I add another one on this side layer, a bit different, but this is good. So now we can warp them, the um, tail easily. So if I put a bone, display disparities here. Well, I'm not sure, but I'm sure that it'll do its magic behind the scenes. That's probably too many, but it'll do. All right, so now... Should get a pretty decent deformation now. So... Image. Smart warp layer. Yeah, right in that drop down. I'll click to bind the points. There we go. There we go. That's better. <laughs> And obviously these things will be all screwed up because they're not bound to anything yet. This is a bit weird what I've decided to do here. The squirrel's a bit weird, so that's... Uh... Yeah, and if you wanted to, you could, say, put a line of uh, points along the center of the tail there, and you could just manually point animate those to sort of get some pseudo-rotation yes. out of the... Well, I did put a little row, so I suppose show if I move that point there, it's, um... Yeah. There you go, you can get a little bit more. So you can build this into a, um, action to rotate the tail, um, um, and get more. And then you could do it so to put a twist the other way down here and if you build that into a smart action and have a lever on it then this kind of thing works nice um and you can see where that's all going to go so pretty awesome i think uh that's that's pretty much it for the um 13.5 features is it I think so. Mm -hmm. It's a um, pretty handy feature, though, especially if you're rigging up uh, images. Yeah. But I mean, you can also you can also use the smart binding on vectors as well. So if you have a really complicated vector with a whole whack ton of points, and you really want to move them around, sort of in groups or in sections, then you can. Uh, use the, the smart mesh to do the same thing on, on a vector piece, which is nice. Totes. Right. Okay. Kind of in that point, it sort of acts a little bit like the magnet tool, right? You know, except with a bit more control. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, if I was going to do this properly, and not just some weird demo, um, I would probably put more points in here, because the resolution isn't looking that gr It's a looking a little bit pointy there, right? So yeah. I'll probably go in and, um, in fact... You should be able to uh, just insert some points. Yeah. And that's one of the nice things about this new Smart Mesh feature is if you that's update right. the mesh, it updates across the board. So I'll put some more points in. You know, I'll just drop them in. Point, point, point. But, See, right here, this is, this is the beauty of the Smart Mesh. Because before, the old mesh, you'd have to clear oh, yeah, everything... Yeah. Delete it all, start over, retrace it, retriangulate it, and it was just kind of a bit of a pain, you know, like just too many steps. And you know, once this is set up, you can just sort sort of dynamically modify your mesh and remove and add points as you want, and still sort of maintain the the rigging the way you want. Yeah, quite nice. Yeah, so you can just put more in if you want another little guide here for some reason. Not that we really need it for that. Try this again with the um, magnet. Let's select some points that we'd like to move. And I'll just be using selected points only, so it'll only be those ones uh, inside the shape of the tail. I can just push them around and see it's not so jaggy now. Um, yeah, and you get that nice amount of control where you can... Uh really sort of deform things as you want on your in your image there's a little bit of weirdness up the top there but 
Mm -hmm. These are all things that can be refined pretty easily. Yeah. Much I mean, more just, easily now yeah. than before. I mean, it's a, it's just a drawing. These aren't even vectors. They're the only vectors. Yeah, that's, that's the, the nice thing. So, because that's all just images, you know. And uh, see how it looks when it renders. Yeah. Of course, this is subject to the resolution of the screen and whatever. But look, look at that. That was so quick. And, and the amount of flexibility you have. And um, yeah, all good. Absolutely. All good. Not to mention, like, I mean, some of those jaggies went in motion. You're not going to see. That's right. Okay, folks, that's it. Join us next time. And we'll dive into more interesting topics about animation. Now, get the heck out of our forest. Get out. Get out.